there are two categories of profitability ratios. We've got margins and we've got rates of return. Let's start with margins. So the most common margins that you're likely to see when you're analyzing the financials are the gross margin, the operating margin, and the profit margin. However, there are other types of margins. For example, you can have an EBIT margin, which is earnings before interest and taxes divided by the company's sales. Or you could have EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization divided by sales. Or you could take the company's earnings before taxes and divide that by sales. Notice the common denominator is sales. Okay, we've always got sales in a denominator when we're calculating a margin. And in the numerator, we've got some measure of profit, whether it be EBITDA, gross profit, operating com, uh, income, and so forth. Okay, So we've got some measure of profit divided by sales. What does that tell us? Well, let's focus on the profit margin. Okay, So net income divided by sales, let's just say the company had a profit margin of 3%. What that is telling us is for every $100 of sales or 100 euros of sales, right, we're going to have $3 of profit, or if it's in euros, it would be 3 euros of profit, right, for every 100 euros of sales. So that's what the profit margin is. So the profit margin tells us a couple of things. Number one, it tells us about the company's ability to manage its expenses. And that's where we'll get into specifics in a minute with the gross margin versus the operating margin. Because you might say, well, why not just focus on the bottom line profit margin? Why do we need a gross margin or what do we care about any of that? We'll, we'll get into that in a second. But in general, margins tell us about the ability to manage the company's expenses and also about the company's pricing strategy. Okay, And when I talk about pricing strategy, uh, there are some companies that tend to have higher profit margins than others just based on what industry they happen to be in. For example, uh, the jewelry industry tends to have higher margins than like the grocery store industry, for example. Okay, so in the jewelry industry, they, they price the product basically a lot higher than what it costs them to purchase that product. Whereas grocery stores aren't, you know, if you buy a box of cereal, it's and let's say you buy a box of cereal for $4, it's not like they're like, oh, we got that box of cereal for 10 cents and we sold it for $4, right? That's not the case. So there's low profit margins in the grocery industry, high profit margins in the jewelry industry, and it just has to do with pricing. Now you say like, well, how do these industries make money and so forth? Well, the grocery industry is making it up on a lot more volume. Okay, so they have a lower profit margin. They're only making, let's say, $3 of profit for every $100 of groceries they sell, but they're selling a lot more groceries than the jewelry store is selling necklaces. We'll get into that. We'll talk about that more and, and when we talk about like decomposing return on assets and stuff later. But for right now, just bear in mind that you could have a higher profit margin uh, because the company just happens to mark up its products more, right, in terms of the price. But specifically, when we're focusing on margins, analyze financial statements, we're going to focus a lot on the company's ability to manage its expenses. Okay, so now let's dive into that. Let's take a look at gross margin, for example. We've got gross profit, which if you remember is sales minus cost of goods sold. So that's gross profit, sales minus COGS, and then we divide that by sales. So what is gross margin telling us? Well, if we leave aside the pricing strategy, which I already talked about, and we focus on the expense side of it, uh, gross margin is telling us about the company's ability to manage its cost of goods sold. Now, what does that mean specifically? Well, if we have two companies and they're in the same industry and they have similar strategies in terms of pricing and so forth, and one happens to have a higher gross margin than the other, it could be that they are getting better prices from suppliers. Why might they be getting better prices from suppliers? I mean, let's say we're talking about grocery stores, okay? We have grocery stores, and one of them has a higher gross margin than the other. It could be that one of those grocery stores has 2,000 stores, and they buy a ton of cereal, so they get a lower per unit cost on the cereal than the other company, which maybe the other company only has uh, four grocery stores. So basically, the company that's buying for 2,000 stores, they're going to be able to negotiate a better price. So it could be that one company has a higher gross margin because it's able to get better prices from its suppliers. But the purchasing of the inventory is not the only cost here. Okay? Remember, there are things like when we talk about shrinkage, right? Remember, shrinkage is the difference between basically what the, the financial books are saying the inventory should be and what the actual inventory count shows your inventory is. Now, why would there be a difference? Well, we, there, there's things like theft. Also, inventory can become damaged. If we're talking about food at a grocery store, it could be spoiled, right? Uh, so if we're talking about like a technology company, it could be obsolescence, right? The inventory becomes uh, obsolete. 
and there needs to be a write down and sometimes that that is run through cost of goods sold and so there are a lot of different things that can affect cost of goods sold beyond just what we paid to acquire the inventory now remember if you're a manufacturer cost of goods sold is telling you about the company's cost of manufacturing the inventory because you basically you're not buying the inventory if you're a manufacturer you are building it yourself so then a gross margin for a manufacturer is telling you not just about you know shrinkage and damage and things like that but also the cost of being able to manufacture the inventory right and if you had two manufacturers one had a higher gross margin than the other and they were similar companies similar industry all that it could be that one of them has just done a better job maybe consolidating their manufacturing facilities operating at full capacity keeping their manufacturing over head down and so forth so there are a lot of different things that could affect this and we want to compare it we, so number one we want to look at a company's gross margin over time has it been going up we'd love to see an upward trend uh, if it's going down then we question well what what is it why is it going down maybe there's competition has entered the industry and they're having to reduce their price maybe the company is having problems with shrinkage and they're not doing a good job managing their inventory could be a number of things but we want to look at the gross margin performance over time, and then we want to compare the gross margin to the uh, gross margin of the comp competition. Now, operating margin. So we got the operating income. Operating income is just the gross profit minus operating expenses like SG&A, R&D, things like that. So you can think of operating margin as measuring the company's ability to manage its operating expenses. So specifically, gross margin just cogs, right? SG&A is not affected by that and everything. So when we're looking at gross margin, one company has a better gross margin. That's not telling you, oh, they're doing a good job keeping their SG&A down. So we want to look at the operating margin when we focus on these operating expenses. Now, let's say you have two companies same industry, similar strategy, all that, same gross margin, but one of them has a much higher operating margin. Then you can tell, okay, they are doing a better job managing whether it be their SG&A or maybe their R&D is lower. For whatever reason, there's some operating expenses that they are doing a better job managing. Okay, the, you might have two companies and one of them has a lower gross margin than the other, but it happens to have a higher operating margin because they're just killing it when it comes to their uh, their operating expenses like SG&A. They run really lean. As a matter of SG&A includes salaries and a lot of things like that. Now, profit margin, that is helpful. So when we've got profit margin, it, it's, it's a helpful of thinking about it. Oh, we did $100 in sales. $3 ultimately becomes bottom line profit. That's great. But remember, this is net income, and so it's sales minus all the different expenses. So there's, it's not telling us about any specific expenses. That's why it's nice not to, because you just wonder, well, why not just look at profit margin? Well, when we drill down and look at gross margin or look at operating margin, we can dig into these specific expenses. If one company has a higher profit margin than another company, it's like, well, why? Was it that they're managing their, their COGS better? Or is that managing their SG&A better? So we really want to look at all these different uh, margins in, in conjunction. Now, I want to take I want to show you some, some actual margin data uh, for Home Depot versus Lowe's. So we can see we've got the gross margin, operating margin, and profit margin uh, for several years. So I've got 2017, 2018, 2019 for Home Depot and then Lowe's. Now let's take a look. Let's apply what we learned. So... If we look at the gross margin consistently for Home Depot during that time period, it was right around 34%. Lowe's was lower by about two percentage points, it looked like. Okay, now if you say, well, two percentage points, what's the big deal? Well, remember, Home Depot did, uh, I think it was $110 billion in sales in 2019. So we're talking about a couple of billion dollars here. So this is not trivial when there's a difference of 2.3 percentage points, right, for 2019 between the two companies. Now, does that mean that Home Depot is getting better prices on, let's say, lumber uh, than Lowe's was? Maybe. Uh, Home Depot is a lo little bit larger store than uh, than Lowe's in terms of the number of locations and sales volume and so forth. Maybe they were getting better prices from their suppliers. But what if they weren't? If they weren't getting better uh, prices, it could be that Home Depot is maybe throwing away less inventory that's like, you know, become damaged or is somehow, uh, you know, there, it was in the storeroom, it got lost. Maybe they're not having that happen as much. For whatever reason, we just know that they are doing a better job than Lowe's during this time period when it comes to managing cost of goods sold. Now, if we look at the operating margin, so it's just a 2.3 percentage point difference when we look at the uh, gross margin. But now when we get to operating margin, that gap between Home Depot and Lowe's gets even larger. Now it's over 5 percentage points. 
Now, some of that was because Home Depot was managing their COGS better, but that was just a 2.3 percentage point difference. Okay, but now if we look at the operating margin, 14.4 versus 8.8. Okay, so now Home Depot is not only managing their COGS better during that time period, but also their operating expenses. Okay, So then we got the bottom line profit margin. We can tell here that consistently, consistently, for whatever reason, and we could dig into the companies and analyze more to try and find out, but Home Depot was managing its cost of goods sold better and its operating expenses during that time period. So it was outperforming. It was outperforming low. 